Useful design ideas. A steam cylinder lubricator feature. Displacement or mechanical? That is the question. Even though I've made quite a few videos on this subject, I receive questions all the time about lubricators, cylinder lubricators to be precise, and this video contains quite a lot of information about both displacement and mechanical lubricators. Some viewers get lubricators completely mixed up. This is a mechanical lubricator. This particular one works by a cam going back and forth and depressing a plunger in the bottom of the tank, which in turn pumps oil to the cylinders. Later on in this episode you will see another type of mechanical lubricator that uses a ratchet system. But that's it for mechanical lubricators for the moment, over now to displacement lubricators. These are a type of displacement lubricator, they're called hydrostatic lubricators. And the glass part is normally filled with something like glycerin, and then you can see the drops of oil going from the bottom of the lubricator to the top. And this shows the quantity of oil that's been admitted to the cylinder. These are not actually lubricators, they're just the sight glass part of a hydrostatic lubricator. Normally the displacement tank, also known as the oil tank, is sighted somewhere else on the engine. So what is this displacement business all about? The water displaces the oil. Here's a type of lubricator that I used to sell a few years ago. They were made for me by Don English. This type of displacement lubricator is also known as an automatic oiler, mainly because there's no adjustment as to how much oil goes into the steam pipe or the engine. All there is on the end of the pipe that goes into the lubricator, the one that's threaded, is a very small hole just inside the lubricator. When I take the lid off it, you can see that there's water in there, and that's why there's a drain tap at the bottom of every displacement lubricator apart from the very small ones on very small steam engines that use a syringe to empty the water out. The part that I've just removed is actually a valve, you don't take it out all the way. When the lubricator is in service you just open this valve, which first of all clears the water and when you see oil running out of it you close the valve. Then before replacing the lid you top it up with steam oil, which is very thick and gloopy stuff. This is another type of displacement lubricator. And it's not a commercial item, this is a one-off that was made for one of the engines that I have. Apart from it being a bit of a different shape, with different fittings, this one has a regulator valve, so you can actually regulate the amount of oil that feeds into the cylinder. If you are using one of these type of lubricators with the adjusting valve though, it doesn't need opening very far. And this particular displacement lubricator doesn't have a drain valve, you have to take the plug out all the way at the bottom to drain it. Which is not very good really, because when the engine is in steam this lubricator is hot, and as you remove this plug, very hot water runs out of the bottom. Here's yet another design, this is a smaller lubricator, ideal for smaller engines. You may have noticed that one thing that all of these lubricators have in common, is the fact that they are designed to screw into something. You can screw it into a hole on the steam chest on the engine, or into a T-piece to put it in the steam line, but you must be aware that this is a displacement lubricator, and it's the condensed water that comes from the steam, that's in the steam line, or in the steam chest, that finds its way via this cross pipe into the lubricator. Once you understand the principle, they appear quite simple, but really, after all these years, I think they're fiendishly clever. But remember, displacement lubricators will only work with steam. They do not work with compressed air. You can't have any displacement unless you have the condensate to do the displacing. This is a Stuart Models lubricator, and these have been around for years. There's nothing different about the design of these Stuart lubricators, except they look like Stuart lubricators and I would generally fit a Stuart displacement lubricator to a Stuart engine. Here is a very unusual form of displacement lubricator, made by a company called Microcosm Engine in China. This one has a through pipe, so you can just insert it into a steam line. Because this small lubricator is made of glass, you can actually see the displacement happening. You can see fairly clear water at the bottom, and the dark brown steam oil at the top, with a kind of emulsion in the middle where the two meet. 
A lubricator like this, though, does confuse people. It makes beginners think, oh, well, you must have to have the steam flowing through it. But no, you could cap off one end of the through pipe and it would still work fine. I'm not a big lover of this type of lubricator because it looks more like a piece of medical equipment. But having said that, as you can see clearly, they work well. And with the body of the lubricator being made out of a piece of glass tubing, you do know when it needs refilling. Mechanical lubricators on steam engines can be problematic. It's well known that they're not always the most reliable device out there. But generally speaking, once you get them to work OK, they just carry on working. On this type of lubricator, the amount of oil that gets pumped out per revolution can be altered by the large nut on the right hand side of the lubricator. So if I find that the lubricator is delivering too much oil, I can adjust this nut to control exactly the amount of oil that I need to be delivered to the cylinder with every revolution of the pump. My showman's engine cylinder is 3 inches in diameter, which is quite big, but it doesn't need this much oil because the smoke box and the chimney itself and the little bit that fits in the top are absolutely covered in a mixture of steam oil and soot. And this is not good. It's not too bad on a 4.5-inch scale traction engine, but on a 5-inch gauge locomotive it soon restricts the flow up the chimney. If you watch this clip from the steam test yesterday, you will see how fast the lubricator moves when the engine's just basically ticking over. I undid the lock nut, rotated the fitting outwards one turn, retightened the lock nut and turned the handle. There does come a point though when the adjustment is all over with. This is too far out and as you can see, there's nothing much in the way of oil coming out of the end of the feed. So this is the pump at the very end of the adjustment scale. Time to slacken off the lock nut and rotate the adjuster one turn in. And here's the result. Some oil comes out at every turn, but not very much. A further half a turn in and the adjustment was complete. This is a very common type of mechanical lubricator, but there are other types. There are lubricators with very similar internal mechanics to this one, but using a one-way clutch instead of a ratchet. There are also some types which use an eccentric on the shaft that depresses a spring-loaded pump piston. The part that I'm currently removing is a very important part of the lubricator. This is a clack valve or one-way valve. It has a stainless steel ball inside it with a spring to hold it in place. Without this, nothing will happen and steam would blow back into the lubricator. It is also very important to have a second non-return valve where the oil goes into the cylinder. The main shaft is threaded into the crank web. If you put it in reverse, it will unscrew itself. But you can clearly see the little piston going up and down in the cylinder. The one flaw with this design is that the oil flow is non-adjustable. The spring-loaded piston type are usually internally adjustable for oil flow, but with this type you have to limit the travel of the arm. These kind of pumps are generally driven off a valve rod and sometimes with a reduction linkage. For each revolution of the crankshaft, the ratchet needs to be clicked over just by one notch. Any more than that and the lubricator will over-oil the cylinder. On my small showman's engine, there is a lubricator fitted, which is the oscillating cylinder type, and this, when I first bought the engine, was over-lubricating like you wouldn't believe. The solution is simpler than you think. You just need to fit a bypass valve. Fitting a bypass to this check valve is really simple. Here I have two 180-degree globe valves. One's a bit small, but the second one, without the handle, screws into the check valve because the thread on it is exactly the same. One point, you may have to use a slightly longer spring. You need to check this before assembling it. With a drop of Loctite 542 on the threads of the globe valve, you simply screw it into the check valve and the job's done. The check valve still functions as a one-way valve, and the globe valve allowed me to fit a piece of pipe back into the tank. It's the same principle as a bypass valve on an axle-driven water pump, except this one is for oil, not water. It's such an obvious and simple concept, I don't know why I've never done this before, because in the past, particularly in the days when I obsessively ran steam locomotives, 
It would have been a quick and simple solution to the over-oiling problem which is prevalent with this type of lubricator. Here I've removed the lid and I can now show the system in operation. The one-way ratchet just makes it so that the oscillating cylinder picks up oil on one stroke and pumps it out on the other. It's as simple as that. This is with the bypass valve almost closed and here I'm opening it. It's very clear that most of the oil starts to run back into the tank. As can clearly be seen, the oil comes out of the pipe on the pump stroke only. And with the bypass valve open like this, the cylinder would not be receiving any oil. By closing the bypass valve altogether, the oil stops flowing out of the bypass pipe, which is fairly obvious. By watching the oil level in the tank and the amount of oil coming out of the blast pipe, I soon found out where I needed to set the bypass valve. And now the traction engine cylinder receives just the right amount of steam oil. It is a simple and uncomplicated fix. That's it for this video. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.